Hey YouTube, welcome back. Today I'm doing a remake of my Raspberry Pi XBMC video. Um, it's pretty easy to install. Here is a download page right here. It's a new one from the old video. The They have different files for each uh, SD card set. So if you have a 1 GB SD card, you can download this one. 2 GB there, and I think they go up to like 8. Oh, they even have 16 and 32. Okay, so... They have a new thing called the Sparky 8015, but I've never used that before, so I'm not so sure about that. So, I just say use the first um, link, the one from 2012. You can just click on it here if you have a 1 gigabyte. And again, 2 gigabytes there, so the one below the new link is what you need. If you're running Windows, you will need a program that allows you to write your image file to a disk or a f uh, USB drive. So I'd say use Win32 Disk Imager. It's really nice and really easy to use. I just downloaded it right now. So I am currently downloading the 2 gigabyte version here. That's what you can see. So I downloaded this one. And that when it's done downloading, I'll unpause the video and I'll show you how to write the image to your SD card. All right, we're back. This is what the um, Windows version of the image writer will look like. There's a button here to select your image file and from here you should be able to click on what drive you want to save it to. Uh, so go ahead and plug in your flash drive and if you open up my computer it should show up um, your flash drive as a drive letter. That's the letter you'll pick here. Do not pick C. It shouldn't even list it hopefully but if it does do not pick your C drive or any other hard drive you want otherwise it will write open ELEC to that and that's not what you want. When you download the uh, image file it will be compressed. So you'll need to open it with a compression program. If you don't have one, you can download 7-Zip. I'll have a link to that also. And you sh it should be able to open up the archive. I'm using Archive Manager, which is built into Ubuntu and also Linux Mint. But if you're using Windows, again, you'll have to download uh, Extractor or Archive Program. Alright, and then here's a folder called Media. And a bunch of other folders and here is the image file this is what we need to extract so I'm going to put it in this folder you can put it anywhere you want but you have to extract it so in most archivers you should be able to just drag it out of the archive but you might just have to extract if you use others so as long as you get your .img file you're good Okay, when it's done, you should have an IMG file in whatever folder you extracted it to. Mine is right here. So if you're using the Windows version, you open up Windows 32 Disk Imager. You click on the folder right there. It'll bring up one of these boxes, and you should be able to browse to your folder with the IMG file. Double click it, and it'll bring it up here. Then you just click here for a device, but since I'm using Linux, I'm not going to be using it this way. This is how you do it for uh, Windows. You just click it, click the device name. It should bring out a list. Click on the one you want on the list. Then just click right and it should have a progress bar going across and then it will write the image to the disk. However, we are using Linux so we're going to use Image Writer. And again, yes you can use DD, but this is for if you just started getting the Linux, you can use this. Alright, so we're going to look for the uh, image file. You'll be browsing as root, so if you want to access your own files, you'll have to go back to File, System, and then Home, and then Your Name, and then you should see the image file. It's right here. Click open. And it'll show it there. Right, minimize itself. Okay. And then you click on drive. And it should pop up with your only your SD card drives. And now we're gonna write it to our device. You'll destroy all data. Yes, we know. Okay. Okay, now the card is written to 
I mean, sorry, the image file is now written to the SD card. We can go ahead and unplug it. Give me a second and unplug. And now we're going to go ahead and put it in our Raspberry Pi. This is the screen you'll see when you first start up your Raspberry Pi. I'm using an HDMI capture device so I can show you what it looks like. It may take a little bit longer the first time, and it might not. Another good thing to note is um, when you're using your Raspberry Pi, you want to make sure you have a high-powered uh, USB outlet you're plugging it into. So, most smartphone chargers should work, but you want to see if you can find one that has a high power rating. So if it's just for a normal cell phone, it might not give you enough power. Okay, here's the um, screen you'll be greeted with when you first start up your Raspberry Pi for the first time with OpenELEC. I'll try to have a link to the video where I show you how to actually set up a remote control for it. But once you have a remote control set up, you can easily scroll between the tabs. As you can see me doing here. Oops. Okay, and you can easily play media that's not saved on your SD card since I'm guessing you probably, well I don't know about you guys, but I just use a 2 gigabyte SD card. You can store all your stuff on a flash drive or an external hard drive. I'm going to plug one in right now. And now I go over to the tab I want, which is video. And you can cl either click on it or go to files. And it just gives you a um, first time run information, just if you wanted to know about that. So, uh, your flash drive should show up over here. Okay, there we go. Now you see my flash drive pop up. It takes a few seconds to recognize it. Sorry, there's a delay on my recording, so I keep scrolling past things when I'm trying to click on them. Alright, let's see if I have anything I can actually run. There we go. We have a 1080p video. This recording is a 720p, but it should still look pretty good. And this is a 720p video playing off a SD card. I have another video about streaming, so if you have a media server set up, you fast forwarding. Yeah, there we go. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. You can skip. And I uh, press back. Okay, so yeah, I actually tried to skip to the next video file. But as you can see, it works. You can load up files. You can open up folders if you wanted to. I don't think I have anything in any of these folders. But by pressing OK, you can open a folder. Or you can go back. And you can actually add storage, but if you go down to add video, it's the last thing on the list. This will give you the option to add your own storage to the um, to the Raspberry Pi. You click browse, and we can see the available storage options. As you can see, we have folders, so you can set, like if you had a videos folder on your flash drive, you can set that to uh, a folder on your Raspberry Pi, so you could access it easier instead of having to open up the flash drive and open up folders. You can also use a SAP stream or a UPnP, which we did for my media server series, I'll have a link to that too, if you want to learn how to set up your own media server. And then there's playlists and all this other stuff, so there's a bunch of different things you can play around with, and it plays a whole bunch of different formats, so... It should pretty much do whatever you want. A bunch of codecs and other video formats work. MP4, I have not tried it. like any of my MP4 files that wouldn't run. MPEG, uh, that works. MP3 music works. I haven't tried any iTunes formatted. But yeah, this is pretty much it. Uh, if you want to go to music, there's another tab on the home screen for that. And there's one for um, pictures too, but I don't 
use my thing as a picture album thing or whatever. One last thing I should probably show you is how to um, change the system settings. Go back up to um, programs. This will let you set a static IP and stuff. And then press OK or Enter, depending on if you're using a keyboard or not keyboard. And then you go to, this took me a while to figure out. You have to go to Open ELE, yeah, Open ELE, EC settings. I right, just click get more. Sorry about that. Okay. Go to open ELK. Yeah, go to that. And then from here you can adjust the system such as your keyboard layout. And you can also adjust your network settings too. And the services that are in use. And all that good stuff. So, okay, that's actually it. So, I'll see you guys in my next video. Have a great day. Bye.